Probably. Uh, I'm not certain. I'm not certain if you travel. Let's see. Hold on. Watch. Funny. Watch. Ball's gone. Ball's gone. D the same pivot foot. Same pivot foot. Which one was his pivot foot, his right or his left? The one he pivoted on. It was the right when he moved it. <laughs> Thank you, Jenna. You are right. That was better than Jaws 3. That was good. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> hey, if you only have time to watch one three-hour NBA game tonight, or if you're anyone other than Nick Wright, check out the Cavs and Raptors. One team has the best record in the East, the league's best bench, and a mascot named after the 1993 hit film Jurassic Park. The other has LeBron James. Cavs beat the Raptors the last time these two teams played. That was 39 roster changes ago for Cleveland. Nick, so many jokes. How important is this game for Toronto and Cleveland? I think, oddly enough, this game actually is more important for the Raptors Ooh. because all of a sudden, that one seed could go away. They've lost four of seven. They had the brutal loss to Cleveland that I think shook a lot of people's confidence in who this was this going to be the same old Raptors or was this going to be a new version of the Raptors that could actually compete with Cleveland in the postseason and now all of a sudden with a red hot Boston team that's winning without Kyrie Irving winning without Marcus Smart they lost to Boston in their most recent game they play Cleveland tonight and then on a back-to-back -back play Boston again they could be in 36 hours the two seed in these. They don't want to be the two seed in these. They don't want to have to face Cleveland potentially in round two of the playoffs. Like so, Cleveland. It would if George Hill plays. It will be, and if Kyle Korver's back, we don't know if he will be or not. It could be theoretically their first game all season with the lineup they will go into the playoffs with. So in that regard, it's important to see how Cleveland looks and if they can finally get, I don't know, a handful of games under their belt with what their actual rotation will be. <laughs> but for the Raptors, if all of a sudden you lose the one seed to a Boston team playing without Kyrie Irving, like that's problematic for any chances they have in the postseason. Uh, you make a great case for it being more important for the Raptors. I'm just going to go on the other side just, just so we can talk about it. The guys who haven't been with LeBron, you talked about the lack of people being familiar, the lack of having everyone that's going to be on the roster healthy and in, in a basketball uniform. What if they defeat the Raptors again by a, an unquestionable margin? How much confidence do these guys who, who don't have playoff experience, because going to the playoffs, we're like, Lynn Jordan Clarkson, how's he going to do? Larry Nance Jr., how's he going to do? Yep. Last time they played Toronto, that was their first time with LeBron, them playing. So in the locker room, Jr. knows. Kevin Love, he knows. T Tristan Thompson, he knows what LeBron can do to these teams in the East. But nobody these else new does. Guys, yeah. until, they put, until they put their eyeballs on it and been like, wow, these guys, I mean, we do have an advantage with LeBron. And that's the one thing that in getting to know Shane Battier and getting to know Dwayne Wade and Ray Allen when they were in Miami, this is something that they thought, but they never knew until they got on the court with LeBron, the overall effect LeBron has on the opposition. So I believe it's just as important for the Cavs and these new guys to have success right. against the team that has the number one seed and, in the and East. And you bring up an interesting point with the new guys because you also have to keep in mind where the new guys came from. Rodney Hood, Larry Nance, Jordan Clarkson, all three of those guys had played their entire careers in the West. So it's not even like they got to experience the other side of it, like that they dealt yes. with LeBron. When the Cavs picked up Kyle Korver at the deadline last year, Korver hadn't played with LeBron, but he'd gotten whooped by LeBron right. in the conference finals. It would be like all these guys have been in the West, but LeBron had kryptonite for Golden State. Right. But these guys had been in the East. They had never seen it before. They're like, man, Golden State's been killing everyone. So now they come to the East. LeBron has that same effect, and I just believe it has an effect on them. They don't have the playoff experience with LeBron, but the more games you can play in it like this, they bring you closer to what the intensity will be like in the playoffs. I think looking at the Eastern Conference now with a handful of games left, I don't seem to care that much that they still have to get George Hill and Kyle Korver back and they have to figure out a way to play. Like, maybe it doesn't matter because LeBron James has single-handedly taken this team on his back to where they are right now to the point where no one's really sure who could be one or two when this ends in the East, where, where the Cavs could very well be in the driver's seat without even have their starting rotation implanted in place heading into the postseason. Well, uh, Jenna, one day it will matter. Even with LeBron getting monster numbers in the playoff, yeah. it matters. LeBron, say he has a stat line of 35, 12, and 9. 
Where did he get these other 55 points from? These guys and whoever is the third scorer, I kind of, we know what we're going to get from Kevin Love. But it's important who that third guy is. Is it going to be Rodney Hood? Do we have to wait for Clarkson to come off the bench to be able to get it going? Yeah. George Hill, is he going to be strong? Cal Corver, will he be a liability defensively? So, yeah, right now it might not look, man. They're just storylines. But come playoffs, LeBron needs some help. And who are these characters? It becomes important to be able to start identifying them. To, to CeCe's point, one of the most, one of the last times LeBron didn't make the NBA Finals, when the Cavs got knocked out with a supporting cast that is similar to this one, got knocked out by the Orlando Magic. LeBron in that series averaged 39-8-8. Eight, and 39-8-8 eight. Eight, and eight for a series, and they lost in six games and would have lost in five if LeBron didn't hit a buzzer-beating three to win game two. So, like, there is precedent, uh, granted it was a decade ago, of LeBron being brilliant and his team getting knocked out. I don't think there's a team in the East this year as good as that Orlando team was. But one other thing to watch for in tonight's game, LeBron is talking more this year, more recently, than I've ever heard him talk. I'm the MVP. I should be the MVP. Now, everyone at this table has said it's James Harden. I believe it should be James Harden. LeBron understands what these three games are. Toronto, Washington, Philly. He also understands that the Cavs, if they go 5-0 and to finish the year, will somehow finish with more wins this year than they had last year when there was no turmoil when they had Kyrie Irving. I think you're going to see the closest thing to playoff LeBron in the regular season that you could see tonight and down the stretch, and that'll give you a better idea of how good this team is against good competition when LeBron's firing on all cylinders. All right, let's take a break right there. Coming up, Josh Rosen's former coach has some harsh words for him, but are they strategic harsh words? That's next on First Things First.